Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the 2016 Harvey Prize Ceremony. Um, welcome to the Heller Auditorium in the Zeloni uh, Student Union Building. Uh, my name is Ehud Behar. I'm a professor of physics at the Technion, and today it's my pleasure to serve as your master of ceremonies. Thank you all for coming. As an astrophysicist, I was overwhelmed with excitement when gravitational waves were detected and a black hole binary was discovered for the first time. It was immediately obvious to me and to my colleagues that this is prize, a prize-worthy discovery. However, I must quote my granduncle here, who used to say that we physicists are the kind of doctors who cannot help anybody. <laughs> to that end, the Harvey Prize this year, and over the years, I should say, is being awarded for breakthrough research in human health, also to, to, also to those doctors who actually do help people. I'm proud to start by inviting the honored members of the Presidium to the stage. Professor Peretz Lavi, President of the Technion. Professor, Ch <laughs> Professor Chagit Atiyah, Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs. <clears throat> Professor Wayne Kaplan, Executive Vice President for Research. <clears throat> and now it's my pleasure to invite the laureates of the 2016 Harvey Prize. In the past, the Harvey Prize was awarded to individual scientists in two fields of research. This year, the prize is being awarded to two research groups, teams. So we're proud to honor the Harvey Prize laureates in this special ceremony today, five laureates. In the field of science and technology, Professor Emeritus Kip Stephen Thorne from the Department of Physics at Caltech, California Institute of Technology. Professor Emeritus Rainer Ray Weiss from the Department of Physics at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Please take your seat on the stage. <laughs> this research team also included Professor Ronald Drever from the Department of Physics at Caltech. The Harvey Prize selection was made in January of this year. Sadly, Professor Drever passed away in March. His brother, Dr. Ian Drever, and nephew, Dr. Douglas Drever, are here in the audience with us representing the family. <laughs> well deserved. In the field of human health, I invite Professor Carl Dysroth from the Department of Bioengineering at Stanford University and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. And also Professor, please. And also Professor Peter Higemann from the Institute of Biology and Experimental Biophysics at the Humboldt University of Berlin. Please take your seats on the stage. Dear guests of the Harvey Prize laureates, members of the Board of Governments, faculty, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the Harvey Prize is awarded without reference to nationality, race, religion, or gender and constitutes an annual tribute to exceptional scholars and scientists from around the world. The recipients of the prize are selected by a committee nominated annually by the Harvey Prize Council. We are honored to have some of the members of the committee here with us today. It's now my honor to invite Professor Peretz Levy, president of the Technion, to convey his greetings. Thank you, Eud. Honored Harvey Prize laureates, Professor Ronald W.P. Driver of Blessed Memory, Professor Kip S. Thorne and his wife, Professor Carol Weinstein, Professor Rainer Weiss, Professor Carl Dysroth, and Professor Peter Higemann. Members of the Technion Management, deans, faculty members, members of the Board of Governors, dear guests. Whoever saves a life, it is considered as if he saved the entire world. This so teaches us the Mishnah in Sanhedrin chapter 4. What a beautiful parallel between each individual person and the entire universe. Similarly, the research of our two teams of Harvey Prize recipients ranges from the external universal scale to the internal cellular scale. The entire universe and each individual person, each team within its field has made a significant contribution to our understanding of our universe 
and how we function within it. Leo Harvey, for whom the Harvey Prize is lovingly named and awarded annually at Technion to prominent scientists and scholars from around the world, was a pioneer, industrialist, and inventor who greatly valued scientific excellence. As a passionate friend and supporter of Israel and the Technion, Leo Harvey was devoted to human progress and the establishment of goodwill between Israel and other nations throughout his life. It is his vision, generosity, and appreciation of scientific excellence which have set the stage for our awards conferred to these five distinguished professors today. Our first team of the Harvey Prize recipient this year in science and technology are Professor Ronald W. P. Driver of Blessed Memory, formerly of Caltech, California Institute of Technology, and Professor Kip Thorne of Caltech, California Institute of Technology, and Professor Rainer Weiss of MIT. May you live long lives. Co-founder of the LIGO experiment, the laser interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, the LIGO, is a large-scale physics experiment and observatory for detecting, detecting cosmic gravitational waves and developing gravitational wave observations as an astronomical tool. This team has worked together for over three decades. In Hebrew, we use the phrase, kiven ledad gdolim emeno, express the opinion of more illustrious than him to describe a later use of substantiation of an earlier prediction, claim or hypothesis by a great scholar. Professor Driver, Thorne, and Weiss' experiment was the first direct detection of gravitational waves confirming a certain pred prediction of Einstein's theory of general relativity and opening a new window to the universe. Technion trivia lovers among us will derive pleasure in knowledge that Einstein's one and only brief English, English language publication on his famous equation, E equal MC square, was published in no other than the US Friends of the Technion yearbook of 1946. We have it in our library. Beyond confirming Einstein's prediction, professors Driver, Thorne, and Weiss are also awarded the Harvey Prize for identifying the source as a merger of two giant black holes and for the unprecedented technological achievement represented by the laser experiment. On September 14th, 2015, LIGO made the first ever observation of gravi gravitational waves, the ripples in the fabric of space and time arriving at Earth from a black hole collision in the distant universe. The detection provided astronomers with an entirely new tool with which to study the universe, ushering in the field of gravitational wave astronomy. Our second team of Harvey Prize recipients this year in the category of human health are Professor Carl Dysroth of Stanford University and Professor Peter Higeman of Humboldt University for their discovery of the opsin molecules involved in sensing light in microorganisms and their pioneering work in utilizing these opsins to develop optogenetics. Optogenetics is a technology that utilizes light to control cells in living tissues, providing for entirely new ways to study brain activity. This innovative approach has revolutionized neurobiology enabling to study neuron functionality in li live animals and relationship between neural circuits and behavior. This work in the field of uh, detailed display of cellular structure and tissue with the help of light has already led to new methods of treatment for neural diseases. I find this work fascinating as I too am immensely curious about what goes on in the brain and how technology is changing neuroscience. Within my field of sleep research, a young assistant professor here at the Technion, Dr. Asia Rolls, recently conducted a study using optogenetic technique to investigate the relationship between memory and sleep. Using optogenetics, Asia found that regardless of the total amount of sleep or sleep intensity, a minimal unit of uninterrupted sleep of two minutes is crucial for memory consolidation. 
Think about it tonight. <laughs> Dear friends, in, in line with the great Harvey Prize tradition dating back to 1972, the prize rewards excellence by recognizing breakthroughs in science and technology as these five great scientists have made during their distinguished scientific careers to date. The prize is a banner of recognition for researchers who have truly contributed to the progress of humanity. No less, however, the prize is a source of inspiration, serving as a stimulus the award urges scientists and scholars toward further accomplishments. We look forward to continuing to follow your brilliant work and achievements and wish you the best of continued success. And we wish the family members, colleagues, and students of dear Professor Driver that his great legacy and memory be blessing. Mazel tov to each one of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Lavi. I now invite Mr. Scott Lee Master, Chairman of the American Technion Society, to have greetings. Thank you, eminent uh, Harry Prize laureates and distinguished guests. I'm especially honored to be here today and to celebrate the distinguished recipients of the 2017 Harvey Prize. Just as the Technion represents the highest levels of academic excellence, this year's honorees who were chosen following a rigorous review process represent world-class figures in the fields of human health and science and technology. As chairman of the American Technion Society, I am proud to represent the Harvey family, whose legacy enables this annual recognition for the best scientists in the world, with many recipients going on to receive the Nobel Prize. The Harvey Prize pays tribute to their steady years of dedicated work and scientific inquiry, resulting in new ideas with practical applications benefiting society. The recipient's expansion of knowledge in their respective fields enables us future scientific advances leading to even further progress. Congratulations to Professor Gieseroth, Professor Higaman as the recipients of the Harvey Prize in the field of human health. As leaders in your field, we express our appreciation for your groundbreaking discoveries in neurobiology and for your contributions to mankind. Congratulations to the Harvey Prize winners in science and technology, Professors W.P. Drever, Kip S. Thorne, and Rainer Weiss. You have our admiration for your innovative work and for following in the footsteps of Albert Einstein by continuing to delve into the secrets of the universe. Unfortunately, Professor Drever passed away, as was explained earlier this year, or earlier. We are fortunate that his brother, Dr. Ian Drever, and his nephew, Douglas Drever, are with us today to represent him, and we offer them our condolences. Professor Drever may not be with us today, but he surely is here with us in spirit, and his legacy will live on. The Harvey family legacy also lives on through this prize, established at the American Technion Society by the late Leo Harvey in 1972. Leo's son, the late Homer Harvey of Los Angeles, who was himself an honorary life member of the Technion Board of Governors, followed in the footsteps of his parents, Leo and Lena in perpetuating the Harvey Prize. And I'm pleased to say the Harvey family continues to be fully committed to supporting the excellence and achievement demonstrated by Harvey Prize laureates. Together with your fellow Harvey laureates, you are building a legacy of scientific achievement that is a continuing tribute to Leo Harvey's vision and an inspiration to countless others. On behalf of the Harvey family, and on behalf of the American Technion Society, I salute you for the brilliant work that has earned you this richly deserved recognition. Thank you. We will now proceed with the Harvey Prize conferment. We will begin with the 2016 Harvey Prize in the field of science and technology. I would like to invite Professor Wayne Kaplan to read the citation. You can find the biographies of the recipients in the brochure. So I'll now read the, uh, the conferment citation. The Technion Israel Institute of Technology, the American Technion Society, hereby confer upon Professor Emeritus Ronald W. P. Drever, Professor Emeritus Kip Stephen Thorne, and Professor Emeritus Rainer Rai Weiss, the Harvey Prize in Science and Technology. In recognition of their role as co-founders of the LIGO experiment for the first direct detection of gravitational waves, confirming a central prediction of Einstein's general relativity and opening a new window to the universe. 
The prize is also awarded for identifying the source as a merger of two giant black holes and for the unprecedented technological achievement represented by this laser interferometer experiment. Granted in Haifa on the 17th day of Sivan, 5,777, which is the 11th day in June, 2017, in the 70th year of the independence of the State of Israel. This is signed by the President of the Technion, Professor Peretz Levy, Chairman of the Technion Board of Governors, Lawrence Jakir, and President of the American Technion Society, Zahava Barnier. Congratulations. Thank you, Professor Kaplan. Professor Levy and Professor Thorne, please step forward for the presentation of the certificate and the prize. Thank you, Professor Levy. I now invite Professor Thorne to respond. You guys wanted to switch? <laughs> so I now invite Ray Weiss to approach the podium and Professor Levy for the presentation of the certificate and the prize. Just shake the president's hand, and I will invite you to. <laughs> yes, please. You, you, you can put it aside. I'll put that aside. <laughs> they, surpri they surprised us. They, they, they changed the order of the uh, greetings. Now yes, please. Yeah, no, please, Ray, come, come over. I now invite Professor Wise to respond. Yes, thank you. Maybe help you a little bit with that. Don't worry about it. Yeah. By the way, before I start, I'd just like to say that Brahms, who was a perfectionist, might have enjoyed that performance, I have to tell you. That. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I'm honored to, to receive the Harvey Prize and I wish to thank the organizers and the search committees for choosing to celebrate the LIGO project. That's the way we look at this. Uh, Kip and Ron and I are symbols of a much larger group than what received this prize. We're symbols for 1,000 scientists and engineers and approximately 60 institutions that are around the world. And we want to thank all of them when we receive this honor. I want to particularly acknowledge the leadership of Barry Barish, who came onto this project at a very critical time and saved it. Now, the direction of direct detection of gravitational waves from astrophysical sources is a further validation of Einstein's general theory of relativity. And it, which was formulated about 100 years ago. And as the pre president said, it's a major accomplishment for the theory. The recent observations of the collision of black holes shows that the theory describes the dynamics of massive objects traveling near the velocity of light and extends our knowledge of the applications of general relativity over an enormous range of gravitational field, st field strengths from microscopic experiments that you do on a table all the way to probably the most energetic collisions, the most energetic things we have ever experienced. The op observations, as your president truly acknowledges, is also inaugurated in new science. And that science is the science of gravitational wave astronomy, which will, we hope, open up another way to look at the universe entirely. Now, the LIGO project is indebted to the wisdom of the United States National Science Foundation, the NSF who with taxpayer money provided the project steady support and encouragement for over 40 years. The NSF took an enormous gamble with this project. The technology was uncertain at the beginning and the sources that might have been detected were not really fully understood. But nevertheless, they supported this for so many years. It was a most unusual and foresighted policy for which the NSF deserves enormous credit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Weiss. I now invite Professor Thorne. Hopefully, he will not say anything that contradicts what <laughs> Professor Weiss said. Or I'll get in trouble. <laughs> thank, 
I, <clears throat> I wanted to speak second because I wanted to make some remarks about my dear friend Ray Weiss at the beginning. Uh, Ray is a modest man. He won't tell you, but he in fact is the primary inventor of the gravitational wave detectors that we use in LIGO. In 1972, when I first heard the idea for these detectors, I was tremendously skeptical. After all, it involved light, using light to monitor the back and forth motion of very massive mirrors, motions that were extremely small, motions so small that they were 10 million times smaller than a single atom. They were one trillionth as big as the wavelength of light that Ray proposed to use to monitor the motion of these mirrors. Obviously, it was impossible. And I so branded it in a textbook that I co-authored with John Wheeler and Charles Misner in uh, 1972, uh, right after Ray had proposed the idea. It was only after intense study of a manuscript that he wrote about this idea, a manuscript, by the way, that he never published in the regular literature because he believed in that era that you should not publish such a thing until after you discovered gravitational waves. That would have been a long time. Uh, but he distributed it. It was published in an internal MIT uh, report series, and he distributed it to his colleagues to uh, read and, and study. After intense study of that, and after a number of detailed discussions with Ray, I became convinced that this actually had a possibility, a significant possibility of success. And it seemed obvious to me that if it did succeed, that this gravita new field of gravitational wave astronomy would have the potential to revolutionize our understanding of the universe. And so I made the decision at that point that I as a theorist would devote uh, most of the rest of my career to trying to help Ray and his experimental colleagues pull this off successfully. It's been a long trek, 45 years since Ray's original idea and since his uh, groundbreaking manuscript where he described all the noise sources that LIGO would face, uh, that the initial LIGO detectors would face, the major noise sources and how to deal with them. Uh, but uh, ultimately it's been successful and it's been successful thanks to the combined efforts of a large number of people. First, Ronald Drever, our dear friend, departed friend, who invented several very clever and important techniques to improve on Ray's design and who co-founded LIGO with us. Also, thanks to a superb series of directors of the LIGO project, Robbie Vogt, then Barry Barish, whom uh, Ray highlighted, uh, then Jay Marks, and now David Reitze. Thanks to the 1,000 members of our LIGO collaboration in 16 nations and about 200 members of the European Virgo collaboration who helped us with our data analysis. Thanks to the US Sci National Science Foundation, which Ray highlighted, and the US Congress, which backed us firmly, regardless of who is in power, the Republicans or the Democrats, since 1992, when Congress provided our first construction funds. And thanks to the American taxpayers, who've provided a billion dollars to fund our effort over the years since 1992. All of these we thank, but especially we thank our LIGO collaborators, 1,000 strong, who in our view share this prize with us. And of course, we are tremendously grateful to the Technion, to the Harvey Prize Selection Committee, who've chosen to honor us and our LIGO colleagues through us. For this one, uh, we thank them for this wonderful award. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Swan. I would like like now to invite uh, to the stage Dr. Ian Drever to receive the scrolling prize from Professor Levy. Now I can hold on to that while you uh, say a few words, please. President Professor Perez Lavi, Technion, and Harvey Prize Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, my elder son Douglas, who is over here, and I thank you very much 
for inviting us to be here today for this significant event. My brother Ronald, who of course is still in my heart and in the hearts of all our family, indeed his presence is felt here today. He was a scientist from an early age. He invented things from an early age. He did experiments on me. <laughs> and I can confirm, therefore, that he was a very careful scientist. He applied electricity to my tongue. <laughs> I can confirm it's a good experience, but it was a way of our relationship being confirmed as brothers. We did everything together. We went to school together. We went to Glasgow University together. We played together. He made wonderful tunnels in sand pits in the garden, much better than I ever did. He made airplanes. He made tiny electric motors the size of half an inch, which were so small, taken from scraps of metal, and he wound the wire on them, and he kept these, and we still have them, kept in the boxes that used to have gramophone re uh, needles from the old-fashioned machines that we all remember. He was very careful. He was extremely thoughtful. We laughed a lot. We never disagreed. It was never worthwhile. <laughs> we learned as a family from early on that Ronald existed as a rather unusual person. He was very slow to write, which was an anxiety. However, that was all achieved in time. His experience has been a joy for me. And indeed, when he became unwell, he was kindly brought back to Scotland to an excellent care home. They understood his needs, and we all understood as he got happier and happier as the results of the amazing experiments began, began to arrive. He was so happy. He was so cheerful. Not only that, his memory began to improve. And perhaps there is a lesson for us all in relation to dementia. The understanding of folk who apparently have limitations is beyond our understanding. I would like to thank you all for allowing Douglas and I to be here, particularly you, sir, Professor. It, it is a joy for us to be here, and I would uh, like to pass good wishes from Scotland uh, with an old-fashioned phrase, which is, lang may your lum reek, which means, long may your chimney smoke. Thank you, Dr. Drever. We are so happy that you and your nephew made it to Israel. The irony of the LIGO discovery just occurred to me. Indeed, before the discovery, we did not, did not know of any black hole binaries. But these mergers take place over only a few seconds. So after we detect them, we still don't know of any black hole binaries. Maybe think about that before the two minutes of continuous sleep <laughs> that Professor Levy asked you to do your homework on. We will now continue with the conferment of the prize in the field of human health. I would like to invite Professor Chagita Tia to read the citation. Technion, Israel Institute of Technology, American Technion Society, hereby confer upon Professor Carl Dyseroth and Professor Peter Higeman the Harvey Prize in Human Health in recognition of the discovery of opsin molecules involved in sensing light in mi microorganisms and for the pioneering work in utilizing these opsins to develop optogenetics. This innovative approach have revolutionized uh, neurobiology, enabling the study of neuron functionality in live animals and their relationship relationship between neural circuits and behavior. 
granted in Haifa on the 17th day of Sivan, first 5,777, on the 11th day in June 2017, in the 17th year of the independence of the State of Israel. Signed by uh, President of the Technion, Professor Peretz Lavi, Chairman of the Technion Board of Governors, Lawrence Jakir, President, President of the American Technion Society, Zahava Barnier. Thank you, Professor Atia. <clears throat> Professor Levy and Professor Dice Roth, please step forward for the presentation of the scroll and the prize. Thank you, Professor Levy. I would now like to invite Professor Dice Roth to respond. It's a tremendous honor to be here and receive this recognition. Thank you to all the honored guests, and I'm particularly delighted to share this award with my great friend and collaborator, Peter Hegemann. I uh, am a neuroscientist, a psychiatrist, uh, and I want to particularly congratulate the Harvey Prize, its vision, its uh, its direction in recognizing advances in human health by focusing on the basic science that underlies uh, advances in human health. Many of these threads that extend far back in scientific history, uh, as many of us in this room will appreciate, could not have been predicted to lead to the advances uh, and the therapies and the improved health that uh, have emerged. In psychiatry, uh, the suffering is great. Uh, the epidemiology is growing. Uh, it's uh, mysterious. It's terrifying. It's completely uh, beyond our ability to understand as scientists. Uh, we don't have anything we can measure in the brain of a mentally ill person. Uh, we don't have good models uh, of the disease because we don't understand the brain itself. And so to understand the brain, we then uh, have to build basic science tools and we need to uh, take the steps needed to advance uh, the, the fundamental uh, foundation of the field. And even further back, even though optogenetics itself, which is a, a way of delivering optical sensitivity to neurons and to be able to control individual cells or kinds of cells in behaving uh, animals to understand how behavior and cognitions and sensations and actions arise from the activity of individual neurons, this was only made possible by uh, threads that extend far back into scientific history, building on decades and decades of work studying microorganisms, uh, archaeobacteria and algae. And this is the key lesson I, that optogenetics, uh, 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 I think, uh, teaches, not too dissimilar to the lessons from, from LIGO is the importance of the long-term and stable uh, support of society for, uh, for basic science. And uh, there's, no <clears throat> uh, there's nothing more I can, can say except I'm deeply grateful for this. I'm thankful for all the members of my laboratory, the students and postdocs who uh, uh, so brilliantly made uh, the, the, the key advances over the uh, five to six years that were needed to make optogenetics uh, into a, a, a fully functional technology. And uh, again, thanks to, to Peter Hegemann and, and his colleagues, and, and uh, I look back with great fondness on all the work we've done together, work we can do in the future. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Dysroth. I would now like to invite, again, Professor Lavi and Professor Peter Hegemann to step forward for their certificate and the prize. And I would like to invite Professor Hegemann to address So ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, Professor Levy, members of the committee, and uh, all of you for coming here 
to this event. I'm very grateful to, re to receive this prize, especially together with my colleague and friend, Karl Dysorus. We worked together for a long time, but this prize means something special for me for several reasons. And the reason is the history of our countries, the history of Berlin, and the experience I made here in Israel over the past 40 years. So about 100 to 120 years ago, the city of Berlin was one of the three great centers of science, and it's a great pleasure for me to hear that the theory of uh, Albert Einstein is still discussed here after more than 100 years. And then the biggest disaster, cultural disaster of all times happened. And uh, it was amazing um, to see the recovery of the relation between the children and grandchildren of the victims and actors over the past 40 years. So I, I visited this country the first time in uh, 1977 and uh, it's, it's really a miracle and a wonder to see how our relation came up and developed and uh, in these days I think the relation between the scientists in both of our countries is better than between most scientists of the world. And what I experienced here in the country is something really amazing. And uh, the openness and the discussion culture and the depthness of, depths of discussion and the controversial discussion, and maybe this is a reason why the discussion with Israeli scientists is more productive than with many more or many other countries uh, scientists in the world. So in these days, I think Israel scientists are the most innova in, in innovative and uh, most productive scientists in Europe. So if you forgive me to collect uh, Israel to Europe, or to <laughs> hijack Israel to the European community. And uh, so the only thing I regret is that I never worked for longer times in this country. But I recently started a new collaboration with Aaron Kaplan from the Hebrew University. So it might be not too late to stay for several months here and to work more closely with these colleagues. So this means that I'm more deeply touched by this prize compared to anything before. So thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much, Professor Egeman. You can see that respond, your respond, uh, response touches us, touches us very deeply. Uh, before we conclude, allow me to invite you to the science talks that will be given this week by our distinguished Harvey laureates in the departments of physics, biology, and medicine. Beyond the department colloquia, I want to mention that the Technion Student Association will be screening, the, the, the student union will be screening the Hollywood movie Interstellar here in the Heller Auditorium and Professor Thorne, who wrote a book about the science of interstellar, will kindly talk about it to our students. The official part of the 2016 Harvey Prize ceremony is over. I would like to ask the laureates and members of the presidium to please step down. At this time, I also want to wish one more time a big congratulations to our distinguished laureates. And I wish you all, please have a pleasant day. and. Enjoy lunch in the next room. Bon appetit.